Spanning more than 2,000 years, it's easy to think that Christianity and its images are as eternal as their message, but the development of a Christian visual vocabulary evolved over many centuries to become what it is today. The Edict of Milan, signed by the Roman Emperor Constantine in 313 CE, brought an end to the persecution of Christians throughout the Roman Empire. However, the growth of Christianity and the decline of pagan religions in the empire was a gradual process that took place across the following century. As Christians grew in number and gained the freedom to create places of worship and burial, a distinctly Christian visual language began to emerge. The Roman Empire covered a majority of Europe and the Near East, and with it the Christian Church. Christians of each region drew from established art forms and modified them to suit their own needs. The catacombs of Rome are frequently associated with the early Christians, but by the 2nd century AD all Romans buried their dead in these subterranean cemeteries. Traditionally, Romans cremated their loved ones after death and interred the ashes. Christianity's emphasis on the resurrection of the body gradually led to a decrease in cremations and a need for additional cemetery space. Elaborate sarcophagi, such as the Ludovici battle sarcophagus, a pagan work from the middle of the 3rd century CE, and the sarcophagus of Junius Bassus, a Christian work crafted approximately a century later, show a somewhat similar taste and style despite the differing religious affiliations of the patrons. These pieces also demonstrate that Christianity, once the belief system of the poor, was now being practiced by those wealthy enough to obtain such luxurious items. Burial places in ancient Rome were privately owned and contained followers of many faiths. The catacomb of Priscilla, originally a quarry, was the underground burial place of the ancient Roman family Asilus Glabrio. Named for the wife of Consul Manius Asilus Glabrio, a Roman who, according to legend, converted to Christianity and was martyred under the orders of the Emperor Domitian, the Catacomb of Priscilla contains numerous Christian frescoes dating back to the 3rd century CE. The most common depiction of Christ in early Christian works is that of the shepherd. The allegorical depiction of Jesus as the Good Shepherd references gospel writings such as, I am the Good Shepherd, the Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John 10, 11, but also recalls the Old Testament prophetic writings of Isaiah. He shall feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom. Isaiah 40, 11. The image used, however, dates back before Christianity to the ancient Greek cult of Hermes Cryophoros, the ram bearer. This rare three-dimensional Christian sculpture from the catacombs of Domatilla shows Christ in a similar pose. The influence of pagan religions is also seen in the use of the peacock, whose flesh was believed impervious to decay as a symbol of the resurrection. Much of the symbolism of the early church also recalls stories from Jewish history. As an outgrowth of Judaism, these stories became symbols of events from Christ's life and passion. Jonah is swallowed by a giant fish and regurgitated on land three days later, foreshadowing the resurrection after three days in the tomb. The youths, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the fiery furnace of Nebuchadnezzar, condemned to die for their refusal to worship the king, emerge unharmed from the flames. Daniel and the lion's den, who too emerges unharmed, are both stories of hope for the persecuted followers of Christ. The sacrifice of Isaac, where an angel intervenes to stop Abraham from sacrificing his son as instructed by God, reflects the eventual sacrifice of God's son. Christian iconography changes the images of the Roman funerary tradition of a meal to celebrate the dead into images of the Last Supper Jesus took with his followers prior to his arrest and execution. Christians memorialize this meal in a ceremony called the Eucharist. Somewhat controversial is that the Eucharistic image from the Catacomb of Priscilla clearly features a woman breaking the bread, implying women held a powerful role in the early church. The anchor, symbolizing steadfast faith, 
The monograms of Jesus represented by the Greek letters Chi Rho and Iota Chi, the very early ichthys, fish, an acrostic of Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior, and the earlier use of these letters to form a six-spoked wheel are also frequently depicted in early Christian works. Fish and loaves of bread, fishermen, the raising of Lazarus, and other gospel stories are also seen. It is possible that a figure of a nursing mother, seen in the tomb of Priscilla, may be the earliest depiction of Mary, the mother of Jesus, in art. The cross as a Christian symbol was used, but not regularly, until the 6th century, long after the fall of Rome and the regular use of crucifixion as a form of capital punishment. Figures of believers with their arms elevated in prayer, called orant figures, recall Christ's arms outstretched on the cross. Until the 9th century, this orans posture was adopted by the entire congregation during the celebration of the Eucharist. Today, the orant pose is still used by Catholic and Anglican priests while performing these rites. A decline in literacy among the population and the growth of the power of the church made the use of Christian symbolism in art and architecture that much more necessary. Illuminated texts, icons, sculptures, and later stained glass windows depict biblical figures and saints with canonized attributes of their life and martyrdom. This image of St. Luke, taken from the Lindisfarne Gospels created about 700 CE, is painted on vellum, a specially prepared leather. It shows the Gospel writer with a winged ox above his head. The wings are a reference to the Old Testament prophecies of Ezekiel and his description of a vision of four creatures. Their faces looked like this. Each of the four had the face of a human being, and on the right side each had the face of a lion, and on the left the face of an ox. Each also had the face of an eagle. This prophecy was taken by Christians to foretell the writing of the four inspired Gospels of Jesus Christ and the first four books of the New Testament. The stories of Jesus' life are only found in these first books. A page from the Book of Kells shows each of the four Gospel writers and the attributes of each. Mark, the lion, Matthew, the man, John, the eagle, and Luke, the ox. Because Luke's Gospel begins with Zacharias, a temple priest and one who conducted sacrifices, the ox became the symbol of Luke. The complex interlocking knotwork and abstracted animal and human forms seen in the pages of the Lindisfarne Gospels show the creators using earlier Celtic and Anglo-Saxon forms melded with Christian iconographic images from Byzantium and Rome to form a distinct style of Hiberno-Saxon art. The complexity of the symbolic representation of biblical persons and saints continued to grow throughout the Middle Ages. Each figure carved on a cathedral, painted on a panel, or depicted in mosaic or glass was shown bearing his or her attributes. Martyrs often carry palm fronds, a reference to Revelation 7-9, and usually the implement of their death or a significant symbol from their life story. Catherine holds the wheel and sword, Bartholomew the flayed skin or knife, Peter the keys to the kingdom, James the scallop shell or pilgrim staff, John the Baptist wears a camel skin coat and is pointing to a lamb with a cross, Paul a book and a sword, Sebastian is shown pierced with arrows. Scenes of the Last Judgment of the Apocalypse greeted worshipers as they entered the church as a grim and brutal reminder of the eventual fate of all unbelievers. The visual language presented was easily understood and powerful to the largely illiterate congregation familiar with the stories. From every wall and window, all were under the watchful eyes of the faithful who sat at the right hand of God. While Christian art shows a diversity of style from one part of the world to the next, the use of abstraction and the lack of spatial perspective in Christian art from ancient times through the Middle Ages was intentional. 
The biblical mandate to make no graven image was frequently cited as reason to avoid the creation of images that might be worshipped as the pagans worshipped their temple gods. Sculpture in the round was largely abandoned by Christian artists until the Renaissance as it bore too much resemblance to the sculpture of ancient Roman Greece. Instead of realistic representations, figures were elongated, flattened, and carved in high relief. Figures were viewed as not being of the natural world, and this gave greater spiritual meaning and importance. With the beginning of the Reformation, the debate of Christian artistic visual representation would take a violent turn with the iconoclasms of the 16th century. Protestants, who equated the worship of saints as idolatry, invaded Catholic churches to burn and smash all figural representations of biblical and historical figures. To this day, sculptures of the faithful are rarely seen in Protestant churches, but hold a place of prominence in Catholic sanctuaries and homes. Christian artistic representation, like all art styles before and after, is a reinvention of accepted standards of artistic creation and methods already established by earlier people. The iconography, too, can be traced back to a retelling of known visual images. This does not diminish the creativity of the Christians or their message. Rather, it shows, just as the beliefs of the Christian were rooted in Judaism, the art of the Christians drew from the well of style, medium, and motif of those who came before.